Okay. My name is Teresa Corky Larson Jonasson. Uh, I was given the name Teresa when I was born. Mostly go by Corky, which is my nickname. It's uh, what my family calls me and now it's what my community calls me. My role here is as lead elder. Um, I've been working a long time in my community. I was approached when this was a an idea and uh, I was asked if I would consider to be the lead elder. I sought counsel with my my Kokom and my elder and John Cryer from Musquachis and uh, and made the decision to accept. It's uh, what the process has been like. What I what I think of first is healing, and um, I think from the first time I when we found out that Red Deer might have an opportunity to do this, we were lucky enough to go to the opening day at Saskatchewan. Uh, Wanaskawan Center, I believe it's called, in Saskatoon. And uh, when I walked in there, the first thing that struck me was the beauty of the vamps and being a beater, how you, you start looking at the workmanship of each and oh there, that one has robins, that one has sunflowers, and you become uh, entranced almost and then you walk a few more steps and you all of a sudden realize what each vamp represents and what you're actually doing and it was very sobering very quickly and I immediately that's when I started to worry about my community. My worry didn't have to be as such. I've seen my community pull together I've seen us learn together. I've seen us respect each other, people of all different faiths. Um, being Learning about and respecting always that, uh, and what we in, encompass here, the traditional spiritual work has been really respected. And I, I don't think a lot of people were aware of, were aware of it before even some of the volunteers. Well, actually quite a few of the volunteers. First and foremost, healing. Working through the grief and everything that comes along with that, either being directly affected by a missing or murdered woman or possibly being one of the women, you know, themselves, ourselves. Working, when you start this healing journey, you, you can't do it by yourself. You need a lot of support, which is what I've seen here. What I hope is that people will find this a safe place to work through that. Through the grief, the grieving process, and the ultimately the forgiveness. Forgiving the unforgivable sometimes. That is when people truly heal. What I'm also hoping for my community is that we keep this going long after the bundle leaves, that we can continue to gather here as women and men, that we can keep supporting the people in our community that do the work to help our people heal from, from this trauma. Because I think one of the mo other things I've noticed is women are starting to find their voice here in our community. They were quiet for a long time, especially our First Nations community. They're not going to be quiet any longer. They're starting to be louder. They're starting to be stronger. And that in turn, if we can teach our next generation, not for instance, to take as long as it did me to find my voice, to learn to find your voice early. Um, a long time ago, it was the grandmothers who were the center of the community. They were the fire. They were, they kept, you know, um, traditions, songs, teachings alive. And we listened when our grandmothers spoke. You can't listen to your grandmother if you're downstairs in the basement playing on the Xbox. So at the very first community conversation we had here in Red Deer, someone said, well, at these gatherings, should we set up a TV somewhere 
for the kids. And I went, no, no more of that. You know, let's encourage our kids to be around us. They'll pick up what they pick up. If they don't want to hear, if they're hearing too much, they're going to leave away. But we have to make sure now that our kids are present. And some of them have been like Gavin here, Raina, Zaya, Ava, a lot of young people. It's so good, feels so good. Sullivan, the world's most perfect baby. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's our food coordinator's son. Yeah. I'm just really happy. I'm just so happy to see women who weren't loud, who were, and I don't mean loud, I mean brave. Mm -hmm. I'm just so happy to see that and I'm so happy to see women, people that have walked away from the community that are coming back because of this. That took a little break from our community. And, yeah. It's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing what we're doing. And we've got to keep it going. <laughs>